We're at Wildwood Baseball Park where tonight the Sheboygan South High Red Wings take on Green Bay West in a uh, Fox River Classic Conference game. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Martin. And uh, South comes in tonight with a 9-3 and record. They're 5-2 and in conference. West comes in with no non-conference games. They're 0-8. Uh, they're really struggling. Had a chance to talk to their head coach, Ryan Sturm. And uh, he's a teacher over at Lombardi Middle School. And he said, uh, you're a young team. And looking at their roster, they have uh, seven different uh, or seven sophomores, freshmen on the team, and uh, only two seniors. So uh, they are quite young. Uh, South comes in, like I said, with a 9-3 uh, and three record. They're 5-2 and two in conference. Uh, their outstanding shortstop, Tyler Zietz, is going to be on the mound tonight. And uh, he's a good one. Zietz uh, coming into tonight's, uh, this afternoon's game, has got a 3.50 ERA. Uh, he struck out 8 in uh, 14 innings. He'll be on the mound. Bayport is uh, in first place, and second place is uh, Sheboygan North. They're a game back. South is two games back. They're having a good year. Stepping in for the Wildcats, the leadoff hitter is uh, Jake Kellner. Kellner's a junior. Takes ball one. Our umpires tonight behind the plate is Todd Stuffigren, and uh, on the base is Dan Schmitz. Pitch on the inside, off the plate is ball two, it's 2-0. Two and, oh. and Zietz runs the count to 3-0. and oh. Kellner swings at that 3-0 -oh pitch and uh, sends it out to right field where it's caught for the out. Making that catch out there was uh, Matt Miller. Next up for uh, Green Bay West is Zach Hazuka. Hazuka is uh, the pitcher tonight for uh, West. He's a senior. There's a pitch on the outside corner for a strike by Zietz. Tyler Zietz also a very good hitter. One and one is the count. South uh, won the other night against the Green Bay Southwest in a very close game. They won 3-2. to two. They only had five hits in the ball game, but uh, they were clutch hits, and uh, that's the key to winning baseball games. you got to get them when they count. Pitch is high. It runs the count to 3-1. Uh, and one. You like your pitchers to get ahead if they can. Zietz having trouble with that so far. Line drive by Azuka to left is a base hit. Put a good swing on that one. Pitch, uh, the ball comes back into Carter Amundsen. It's uh, raining outside, not heavy. Uh, we are getting a little bit of an early start to try and beat the rain. Uh, so wetness on the ball is going to be an issue. Next up for uh, West is Mitch Egan. Egan playing out in center field tonight. That pitch is low. Zuka on first. You can't see him in the corner of your screen, so he's not way off the base. Hanging pretty tight. Followed by Egan at the plate. Put a good swing on it, but uh, couldn't square up on it. We got the A team here tonight. Richard Bartson on the first base camera. Kerry Coutzer behind home plate. Scott Mailoff in the truck, our director. And we do have a third camera that's being run by the Invisible Man. That's a stationary camera. Gives you another perspective there. You see it right there. Count is no balls and two strikes on Egan. Zietz with a pickoff attempt, and they got Hazuka. Picked him off a first, got a little too much of a lead, and uh, Zietz was able to pick him off. So that means uh, two outs now. 
And there you see what I was talking about with uh, the ball being dry or wet because of uh, rolling in the grass. It's raining out. I threw that one out of play. They'll dry it off in the dugout. Egan sitting at the plate with a no ball, two strike count. There's two outs now, nobody on. And Zietz with the strikeout. At the end of one half inning of play, Green Bay West zero, South coming to bat. A child from foster coach. care. Just being there makes all the difference. Every day, thousands of people suffer from sudden cardiac arrest. Would you know how to help? Or would they be all alone? Learn what to do at heartrescuenow.com. Back at Wildwood Baseball Park, uh, we're heading into the bottom of the first. Uh, south uh, able to keep West off the board in the top of the first, and now it's going to be uh, South's turn. Uh, Tyler Zietz, the pitcher, will lead it off. He'll be followed by John Raff and then uh, Carter Amundsen. Uh, Zietz is going to step in. He's got 16 hits and uh, 41 at-bats. He's hitting 390. He's also scored a team-leading 15 runs. He's also drawn eight walks, which is high for the team lead with Raff. So uh, he likes to get on base. Azuka pitching for uh, West and doing the catching for the Wildcats is John Day. Azuka, we mentioned, is a senior. Raph, when he's not pitching, is a south shortstop. That pitch is uh, outside. West, uh, in years past, and I'm talking uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago even, was uh, had one of the best sports programs in the conference. And uh, things have gone downhill for the Wildcats. Uh, most of that is a result of just the change in the way the city is structured in terms of uh, demographics. They've got some athletes over there. They don't always have a lot of experience. But uh, Coach Ryan Sturm is uh, working hard with the boys and uh, trying to keep them motivated, keep them playing hard. That pitch is outside. It's 3-0 and to Zietz. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, he's uh, drawn a team-leading eight walks, and uh, he's very patient up there. You'll, he probably won't be swinging at this 3-0 and pitch. And that pitch goes in high. It's a walk. Zietz is on first. And that's going to bring up John Raff. Raff uh, is pretty much the full-time catcher. He does a little bit of pitching. Got a little bio on him. He's one of the two seniors uh, in their program. They have uh, some information on the two seniors. Coming into a pinch run for South is uh, Joey Schultz. You might remember that name. Joey plays football and basketball. He's a pretty good basketball player. Have good quickness.
Anyway, in uh, John Raff's bio, it's got uh, his favorite food is pork chops. I'm a pork chop man. How about you, Mike? <laughs> Mike Rat's up here with me. He's running the scoreboard and the book for South. Can't talk to Mike too much because there's a lot to do with running the scoreboard and the book. That's a full-time job. Raff trying to lean his elbow in to take a hit by pitch, but uh, couldn't quite get it. Takes a ball. It's 2-0 to John. Joey Schultz on at first. Pinch running for uh, Tyler Zietz. Pitch is hit to a short right, the second baseman out, and gives way to the right fielder who uh, makes the catch. Max Prozanski made the catch out and right. Good communication by those boys. Carter Amundsen is really a story so far this year. Carter has uh, just been ripping the cover off the ball. He's got 23 hits, leads the team by a wide margin, and only 43 at bats. He's hitting 535 on the high school season. He's got 16 RBIs, leads the team in that court, uh, category. Also has nine doubles, leads the club in that category. Schultz steals second base. And throw goes out in the outfield, but Joey's going to hang on at second base. He's in scoring position now for Amundsen. Todd Stuffiger and taking that ball out of play, getting a dry ball in there. Like I mentioned, Amundsen uh, is really having an outstanding year. He also has three stolen bases. Moved out from behind the plate with Raff there. Carter uh, does some catching, not a great deal. Sends a pop-up uh, out of play. One and one to count to Carter Amundsen. Carter also a basketball player. I believe he plays football too, doesn't he, Mike? Okay. We won't mention that he gave it up last year then. <laughs> Baseball and basketball. Be playing Legion ball again this summer too. Another ball hit foul out on uh, New Jersey Avenue. Well, it's pretty nice up here in the booth. It's not very nice out there on the field. It's uh, starting to rain a little bit harder not enough where they'd call the game, but uh, it's certainly not a comfortable situation for the boys. Azuka is uh, very deliberate in his uh, motion. It's a line drive to second baseman. And a nice play made over there by Jake Kellner. And the runner, Schultz, moves over to third base. So with two outs, Robert Huffman is up in a clutch situation. And this is what we were talking about in that uh, Southwest game that uh, the Red Wings won 3-2. to two. They didn't get many hits, but when they got them, they really counted. Huffman comes in hitting 270. He's uh, got 13 RBI, so he's been an RBI man for the Red Wings. Let's see if he can deliver. Takes that first pitch and pops it up. Day looking for it and couldn't quite make it, make the catch. I'll probably have to give him an error on that, not making the catch. Huffman back in there. Huffman's a good athlete. A lot of multi-sport players for the Red Wings.
Zuka's pitch is uh, outside. Evens the count at one and one. There's two outs. Joey Schultz is on uh, third base. He came in to pinch run for uh, Tyler Zietz, who walked. Uh, Joey stole second and then advanced to third on a ground out by Carter Amundsen. Huffman, soft liner right to Kellner, and uh, he makes a catch, and that's the end of one inning of play. No score. Uh, we'll be right back with the top of the second. He serves his party best, who serves the country best, Rutherford B. Hayes. Patriotism is easy to understand in America. It means looking out for yourself by looking out for your country. Calvin Coolidge. Government is a people's business, and every man, woman, and child becomes a shareholder with the first penny of tax paid. Ronald Reagan. There's nothing wrong in America that can't be fixed of what is right in America. William Clinton. Be the we now. Back at uh, Wildwood Baseball Park, getting ready to start the second inning. Uh, as mentioning, I had a chance to talk with uh, Coach Ryan Sturm and his assistant, Paul Haig. Haig is a graduate of South High, graduated in uh, 1995. Has several brothers that live in town. Uh, Paul is a teacher at West. I mentioned that uh, Ryan Sturm uh, teaches middle school at Lombardi Middle School in uh, Green Bay. Those guys got their work cut out for them. Leading off the uh, top of the second is uh, Nick Gretzen. Gretzen playing shortstop. He's a junior. Pitch right down the middle, evens the count at one and one. South looking to stay in conference uh, contention. They're uh, two games out of first. Recolitis over. Tanner Recolitis making the catch in fall territory. Measured that one nicely. Got to the uh, warning track and made the one-handed catch. Next up for uh, West is their first baseman, Mitch Greeton. Mitch is a uh, junior also, steps in, left-handed hitter. There you get that uh, camera shot by the uh, our third camera, and there's uh, Kerry Kautzer's shot. A little up from that uh, field camera shot. Ball followed back by Greeton. Richard Bartson is uh, down the first baseline. Line drive, Greeton nails it past the uh, south high second baseman, Huffman, and uh, he has a base hit. So with one out, the Wildcats have a runner on first. John Day, the catcher, stepping in. Take his wax at home plate. Greeton doesn't look like much of a stealing threat, but uh, you still got to keep an eye on him. Zietz uh, has a good arm. Put a little mustard on it when he needs to. Day not able to get around on that pitch. Fans starting to file in. Uh, this game got started about 10 minutes early. That's why some of the fans, they, they're on time. It's the game that got started early. Seats with a 2-1 and one count on the batter. That pitch uh, is a little bit low. Makes it 3-1. and one. Tyler had some problems in the first inning, uh, throwing strikes, was able to get out of it without any uh, damage. 
And Day swings and misses, and now we have a full count, three and two, with uh, Gretzen, uh, or pardon me, Greeton on first. And Zietz, Powder River, struck out Day. That's uh, Zietz's second strikeout. Aaron Mitchell up. Mitchell playing third base. Seats uh, pitch rides outside for ball one. Greeton still on first. He got that single to right center. Ball two. Zietz throwing a lot of pitches, not getting ahead of the hitter the way uh, Coach Craig Clase would like. And again, that pitch outside, it's 3-0. Craig Clase is uh, the head coach for uh, South. He teaches over at uh, Farnsworth Middle School. There's a strike. Craig Clase in his 12th year as the head coach. And uh, that's a, that pitch is a strike, swung in and missed. And now we got a 3-2 count. Greeton will be on the move here. And Zietz strikes out the batter. Mitchell, and that ends the top of the second. No score through an inning and a half. Are you connected? If you don't have access to internet, you aren't going to be able to take advantage of anything. The internet is essential to the basics in life, housing, health care, employment. I personally benefited from broadband because I was able to fill out different applications, and I'm pretty positive that I'll get another job. To get connected, call 866-765-9118 or visit changeyourtomorrow.org. If everyone had access to the internet, people's lives would be changed. Connect today. Change your tomorrow. The curfew you have imposed on me is an egregious infringement upon my social well-being and freedom. Speaking of freedom, it is preposterous to suggest that I have my homework done before playing video games. I know my rights. You can't tell me what to do. Mom, Dad, you have 30 seconds for a response. Does every conversation with your teen turn into a debate? Call the Boystown National Hotline at 800-448-3000 or visit parenting.org. Trained counselors are on call 24-7 to help with parenting problems. Getting ready to uh, lead off for the Red Wings in the bottom of the second is Tanner Recolitis. Tanner is uh, hitting an even 300. It's 12 for 40. Does have six doubles and 10 RBIs. That 10 RBIs ranks him uh, third on the team. I was just looking at the records from last year and uh, South finished the season at 14 and 14. And they were uh, Sixth in conference, uh, definitely doing better this year. Got pretty good pitching, and uh, obviously they're hitting the ball real well. Their uh, team average is uh, 336, which is a really, really good. Team ERA is also very outstanding at 2.95. And uh, we mentioned about Zietz and uh, how he was doing on the mound. In 14 innings, he had a 3.5 ERA. Uh, he has given up, however, 19 hits. And uh, that kind of reflects the way his first two innings have gone, uh, allowing a hit in each inning. What he needs to stay away from are the walks, if he's going to allow that many base hits. Tanner Recolitis, the uh, first baseman, steps in. Tanner made a nice catch in fall territory. Last half inning. Tanner does a lot of pitching for uh, the Red Wings. He's 2-2 two and two on the mound, has already thrown 25 innings, and has a 3.36 ERA. You mentioned he's hitting an even 300. Ball two. Zuka able to uh, work out of a first inning jam. 
uh, Joey Schultz pinch running for Zietz made it all the way to third before the last out was recorded. Pitch up. Zuka questioning uh, Todd Stuffergren on that pitch. It's three and all. And there must have been a strike mixed in there somewhere that I missed. It's three and one. That pitch is also a strike. Full count now to Tanner Recolitis. Tanner being very patient at the plate. On the season, he's uh, only walked four times. That ball uh, out of play. Uh, it's hard to tell on uh, on your uh, screen at home, but it is raining out there, and uh, the field is definitely wet. You might get a little better look at it there. You see a little bit of haze, a little bit of uh, mist on uh, Richard's camera over there at first base. That pitch is way up, and Tanner takes it for a ball four. So another leadoff hitter is on for the Red Wings. Jared Next up is Jared Recolitis. Jared is a sophomore. He's only hitting uh, 207 on the year. Does have a home run and a double and four RBIs. Big kid. Tanner Recolitis taking a nice lead off of first. Ball is hit out of play out on New Jersey Avenue. You know, with having a three camera setup, uh, Scott Mailoff in the truck has a little more work to do. He's, we usually go with only two cameras, and uh, it's a matter of flicking that switch back and forth. Now he's got to work with uh, another dial or so. But he's up to the task. You see Recolitis taking a bit of a lead. You can see him now in your monitor. That means he's got a pretty good lead over there. And he's going. Pitches outside. Days throw down to second. Short hops the uh, second baseman. And uh, Recolitis is in with a stolen base. For Tanner, that's his uh, fourth stolen base now. Leading the team in that category, along with uh, Zietz, who has uh, four. It doesn't look like uh, Zietz will get any tonight, however. When he gets on, they're going to be pinch running for him, let the pitcher get a little bit of a rest. Jared Recolitis Falls it right back off the um, face mask of uh, John Day. One ball and two strikes to uh, Jared Recolitis. Jared is the DH tonight. He's uh, batting for uh, Nick Borstead. Borstead is playing third. We'll have to see if uh, Nick gets in the ball game to get in at bat. But right now it's Recolitis, Jared Recolitis. Jared again falls it off the mask of uh, Day. <laughs> Day is taking a beating back there. <laughs> the two mics in the booth are glad we're up here. And that pitch is swung on and missed. Azuka. With the strikeout of Recolitis, that's uh, Azuka's first strikeout of the ball game. Zach recording a strikeout to go along with a couple of walks. Next up for the Red Wings is uh, number 33, Matt Miller. Matt playing out in right field. 
Matt has seen uh, limited action so far this year. He's only come to bat eight times, but he does have four hits. Pitch rides inside. He's walked twice, struck out twice, has a couple of sacrifices. Just moved up. Matt is a sophomore, just moved up to the varsity. That's why his at-bats are, are low. Curveball hangs up for, or is that a strike? It's hard to tell. Stuffy not real vivacious on his balls and strike calls. He usually punches his fist right in front of his body. It's a little tough to see from back in the press box. Drive out to a left field by Huffman is in there, a base hit. And uh, Clace holds Recolitis at third. Nice piece of hitting there by uh, Matt Miller. Next up for uh, the Red Wings is the center fielder, Mitchell Martinez. Martinez uh, is really striking the ball well. He's 11 for 30, hitting 367. And uh, I've seen him play over the years, and I like him. He's a, he's a good player. He plays hard, uh, pretty good fielder. He does have seven RBIs. Uh, the one drawback maybe to Mitchell in terms of his batting anyways, he does have eight strikeouts in only... Uh, 30 at bats. You might want to clean that up a little bit, but uh, the average is certainly up there. Miller taking a couple extra steps, but uh, Zuka drives him back. Now uh, you can see uh, Matt Miller taking a little shorter lead. Now he's starting to stretch it a little bit. Azuka comes set at the belt, and the pitch falls straight back. Mike, you can get up from under the counter now. The ball is down on the grass. It stopped rolling. <laughs> Martinez is a junior. Had a nice season last year. He's a football player. Ball is hit up in the air on the infield. Racing back and measuring it and making the catch is the uh, first baseman, Mitch Greeton. And uh, now there are two outs for uh, the Red Wings. Aaron Gutierrez. Stepping in to uh, hit. AJ is a uh, freshman. And uh, as we look through, he's got 21 at bats, uh, five hits. He's hitting 238. He'll need to come through in the clutch for a south to score runs. There's two outs. Runners on at first and third. Drecolitis uh, still perched over at third. He's been there for a couple of hitters. 1st base is Matt Miller. Matt looked like he was going to steal when uh, Mitchell Martinez was up, but uh, Azuka kept him close, kept him on first base. Line drive to left, the left fielder racing back, racing back, and he can't make the play. The ball is down. Two runs are going to score for the Red Wings. And give the batter Aaron Gutierrez a double. And two RBIs. Good job of hitting. And South on the board. It looked like the uh, left fielder, Austin Willaquette, had uh, a beat on it, but he just couldn't quite catch up with it. And that brings up the leadoff hitter, Zietz. Zietz walked his first time. The chance to uh, help his own cause. Zietz uh, swings and misses. Ball got away from Day and uh, hustling over to third base was uh, Gutierrez, or Gutierrez. 
It's two to nothing south. Gutierrez with a two RBI double. Hit it right over the left fielder's head. As I look down on the uh, that extra sec section in front of a uh, home plate where the uh, cement is, the rain seems to be coming down a little harder now. Richard uh, down that first baseline is out in the elements. Can't be very nice for him. Zuka looking in. Ball is driven to right, moving over and measuring it and making the catch for the third out was Max Prozonski. And uh, that's the end of the inning for the Red Wings, but they come up with a pair of runs and lead it after two complete, two to nothing. My diabetes tests me every day. It tests my parents, my friends, my gymnastics practice. But JJRF has my back. They're working hard to find a cure for type 1 diabetes, which for me would mean freedom. And they help me now with better treatments and new devices that make my life easier. The folks at JJRF test themselves every day. So someday, I won't have to. JJRF, improving lives, curing type 1 diabetes. Come on, let's go. Hey. hey, hi, what's your name? You live around here? You're pretty. W where are you guys going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you it's about time to get you fixed, sweetie. Your pets will start getting noticed sooner right, than go. you think. Accidental litters lead to millions killed in shelters each year. Help prevent more. Fix at month four. Leading off for the Wildcats, number two, Max. Back at uh, Wildwood Baseball Park, there you see it, South uh, leading by a score of uh, two to nothing as uh, we enter the top of the third. Leading off the inning for uh, the West Wild Card Cats is their uh, number eight hitter, Max Prozonski. Seats his first pitch is uh, up and in for ball one. So far in the ball game, uh, Tyler has had trouble throwing strikes, but he hasn't walked anybody. But uh, he's throwing a lot of pitches. That uh, ball was uh, hit pretty hard by Brzezanski, but uh, foul in the bullpen area down the uh, first base side. One and one is the count. We're in the top of the third. South on top, two to nothing. And that pitch is called a strike. Todd Stuffergren has been uh, in the umpiring business for quite a few years. Ball is hit to the third baseman who scoops it up and uh, throws high over Rekolitis' head. And uh, the ball goes out of play. The runner, Prozonski, will go to a third. That was Nick Borstead. And if a Borstead threw it over Recolitis' head, you know it was high because uh, Tanner's a pretty big kid. So score that, a two-base error on Borstead. And that brings up the nine-hitter left fielder, Austin Willowquette. He was uh, out and left when uh, Gutierrez uh, hit that ball for a double to drive in two runs. Tries to lay down a bunt and falls it off. Also helping out on the coaching lines for a South is uh, Mike Zietz and uh, Will Madsen. Uh, Will generally works with the pitchers. And of course Craig Clace, the head coach. That pitch... Uh, Been called the ball. It's one and one. 
Nobody out. Prasansky on at second base. Reach there on a throwing error. And the Tyler back to his old ways, getting behind the hitter. Got Willaket to uh, foul off a bunt attempt, and now he's throwing two straight balls. That ball uh, just passed Zietz to the second baseman. Huffman, who makes the play over to first, but uh, advancing the third was uh, Prasansky. So even though Willow Kett gets uh, charged with an at-bat, he got the job done. He got the runner over to third base. And that takes us to the top of the order where Jake Kellner's up. Kellner flew out to a short right back in the first inning. Kellner is a junior. There's number three on his back. There you see Prasansky over at uh, third base. And you get a good shot of the back of Tyler Zietz. Ground ball over to Recolitis. He steps on the bag for the out and the run scores. West is on the board. It's 2-1 to one south. But uh, Kellner got the job done. Batting number 10, Zach Azuka. Azuka is uh, up next. Zach uh, doing the pitching, of course, for uh, West. He had a single back in the first and then promptly got picked off by Zietz. Pitch rides up high for ball one. It's two to one. We're in the top of the third inning. South on top. Zuka back in. It's a good rip at that, but uh, couldn't catch up to uh, the Zietz fastball. It's one and one. And we must have missed a strike. I think that first one was fall tick, Mike. That's what they're talking about. Anyway, that uh, third pitch was strike three. Another strikeout for Zietz, but uh, West gets on the board. After two and a half innings of play, South two, West one. Honestly, dude, I did the most shocking thing today. It was just something I never thought I'd do. Did your parents find out? My mom cried. What'd you do? You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Getting ready to uh, start the bottom of the third inning. It's going to be uh, Raff, Carter Amundsen, and uh, Robert Huffman. Raft doing the catching. Uh, another bit from uh, John's bio, his favorite baseball player, Jeff Samarja, Chicago Cubs. All of a sudden, John Raff is my favorite South High player. <laughs> Just like that. John's South High baseball memory. Anytime we beat North or Manitowoc. I get the North one, but not sure about the Manitowoc one. You've heard that comment, Mike, about an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Yeah. Well, John's pregame ritual is eat an apple and take some ibuprofen. 
I would take the ibuprofen after the game. <laughs> John flew out to right his uh, first at bat back in the first inning. We might have to go with the speed up rules. Uh, don't throw it around the infield between after outs and between innings just to get it back to the pitcher. Todd Stuffergren shaking the water off of his uh, jacket. Raff uh, trying to bunt his way on, falls it off. Good sportsmanship shown there by uh, John Day. This is going to be like a major league game. Every ball that's fouled off or hit is going to have to be taken out and rubbed down. It's uh, coming down pretty good. Not enough for us to stop the game, and the field is actually in very good condition, but uh, it's not conducive for baseballs, that's for sure. Ball is popped up on the infield. Shortstop comes over. Looks a little shaky, but makes the catch. That was Nick uh, Gretzen. Carter Amundsen uh, steps in. We mentioned Carter having quite a season. He has uh, really been hitting the ball well so far. First pitch by Hazuka is high. Carter hitting 522 now with his uh, 0 for 1. Pitches up high. It's 2 and 0. I remember a few years back uh, when Johnny Brazali was at North, uh, was played center field, also was a guard on the basketball team, but he had just an outstanding. Uh, spring uh, with the Nar North High baseball team. He ended up the season hitting over 500 and uh, was just uh, everything went right for John that time. That's ball four. Amundsen on. Only one out for uh, South. That's the uh, third walk given up by uh, Zach Hazuka. Robert Huffman stepping in. Huffman uh, popped up to the second baseman his first time up. He's hitting 263 now. One out. Zuka drives the uh, runner Amundsen back to the bag. Over at first for West is uh, Greeton, first baseman. You don't want to let him get in your way going back to the bag. Big fella. Pitches inside for ball one. Tanner Recolitis is on deck. Tanner scored back in the second, first run for South. And then right behind him was uh, Matt Miller. Line drive, base hit to uh, left field. Amundsen wanted to go to third and got about a third of the way down and then put on the brakes and hustled back to uh, second base. So with one out, the Red Wings have runners on first and second, and stepping up is uh, Tanner Recolitis. His nickname is T-Rex. We're seeing him at first base tonight. I also mentioned earlier he's got 25 innings pitched so far this season. He leads the staff in that department. His favorite food is one that everybody likes, especially the mice around my house, peanut butter. <laughs> How can it not be meat? Ball one to Tanner. 
Favorite baseball team? I like one out of the two, Mike. The Nationals and the Cubbies. Cubbies. Ah. <laughs> Got some smart players there on the south side. Really? Well, Tanner must be a pretty smart guy because his favorite teacher is Mr. Ecklert, who teaches logic. So don't get in a debate with Tanner. Two balls and no strikes. That pitch is high and outside. South has runners on first and second. There's only one out. Uh, Recolitis up. Jared Recolitis, the DH, is uh, on deck. And that's a ball. Must have missed a strike somewhere. It's three and one. We might have to stop telling stories and start paying attention to the game. Runners on the move, and that's ball four to uh, Tanner Recolitis, and that loads the bases. Jared Recolitis is uh, 0 for 1 in the game. He struck out back in the second inning. Uh, now would be an excellent time to uh, get a base hit with the bases loaded and only one out. You mentioned uh, Jared does have a home run this season. Drives that pitch foul on the first base side. Dan Schmitz out on the uh, bases, our umpire out there. Dan's been around a while, too. Got an experienced crew umping tonight. Pitch rides up high. One and one is the count. There's one out. Bases are loaded. We're in the bottom of the third. South on top, two to one. Little bouncer in front of the play to Zuka. Tosses it home to get the force, but uh, it's late, and the runner slides in safe. And South adds to their lead. It's now 3-1. to one. Matt Miller. So we'll give uh, Jared Recolitis a fielder's choice and an RBI. And uh, Hazuka couldn't get the uh, out at home plate. Made the right play, but just a little bit late. In the booth is uh, Chris Hine. He's all smiles. He's out of the rain. <laughs> Willie Matson uh, is here. Willie sometimes has to come late to the games because of his job. And uh, that's part of the reason why Mike Zietz is helping out. Up steps uh, Matt Miller. Matt uh, singled and scored back in the second. We mentioned uh, he just moved up. It's a hard one to first. Gretzen uh, makes the play for the out, and another run scores for South. Or are they calling it a foul ball? It's a foul ball. Everybody goes back. South on top, 3-1. to one. Maybe we'll have to get Mr. Hine on the, other, uh, on the other headset. It's all set up for you, Chris. Maybe we'll wait till the half inning's over. And gather your thoughts. <laughs> With all the bad weather we've had this spring, it's certainly been a headache. Chris couldn't have picked a worse time to become the athletic director with all the scheduling changes. I mean, it got so bad for baseball, they redid the uh, schedule. That's a pop-up on the infield. That's going to be an automatic out, infield fly rule in effect. Uh, Kellner making the catch. Now there's two outs. Mitchell Martinez is going to step in to hit. Mitchell hitting uh, 354. He's 0 for 1 in the game. Huffman on third. Tanner Recolitis on second. 
and Jared Recolitis over there on first. Martinez at the plate. South has uh, gotten one run this inning, but they're looking to get a lot more. They've uh, had many opportunities through these first uh, three innings, but uh, have only cashed in for three runs. Could easily have been more. Martinez pops it up into uh, center field. It's uh, Oh, it falls between a whole bunch of West players. And Martinez is going to end up on second base, give him a single, and a two-run score. It's just a case of too many players around the ball and nobody called for it. That's a big hit for Martinez to drive in two more runs. Gutierrez up. He doubled back in the uh, second inning a pair of runs. He's got a chance to do it again. Tough break for West. The ball looked like it was catchable, but uh, everybody got out there, but nobody called for it, and it dropped in. We got a replay on that, Scott? Five to one is the score. South has tacked on three runs here in the, set, in the third. Ball is high to Gutierrez. Zuka's pitch is uh, low and outside for ball two. It's two and oh. Jared Recolitis is at third. At second is Mitchell Martinez. Martinez did a good piece of base running. Drive out to a left field. And making the catch out there was, Prezant, uh, pardon me, was the left fielder, uh, Willa Kett. But uh, South tacks on three more runs, and uh, at the end of three, it's five to one, Red Wings. I'm Sandra Fry. I'm a union bus driver, and I'm also a mom. During 17 years with Greyhound, I've covered over two million miles. My job is to safely bring families together. I love the open road, but I never forget that a drowsy or careless driver could be right around the next curve. Drunk driving is the deadliest of all. As a mom and as a bus driver, I have a message for you. If you drink, don't drive. When you're behind the wheel, always watch for people walking and biking. It's Wisconsin law to give bikes at least three feet when passing. In Wisconsin, the laws are the same for bicyclists and motorists. So if you bike, ride with the traffic and obey stop signs and lights. People ride bicycles to go places, get exercise, reduce pollution, save money, and have fun. Watch for people riding bikes when you're driving. Share and be aware. We're all responsible. Even in your senior classes when you had uh, <laughs> history, they didn't want you to talk loud then? No. <laughs> Joining me is uh, Chris Hine. Chris, talk a little bit about the spring and the weather and, you know, with all the scheduling. I mean, we're at a baseball game now, and we know that it's created havoc, but baseball is not the only sport that's been affected. No, um, every sport's been affected. I mean, it's been a little bit of a nightmare. I think, I, you know, um, obviously it was tough my first year. I think Jason Lederman knew this was going to happen and got you in there just in time? I think he did. <laughs> I think he did. But uh, really it's, you know, Toughest on the kids, I, you know, I just feel bad for the kids missing games and opportunities for games, especially the seniors. You know, some of these games we're just not going to be able to make up. Right. You know, a lot of the non-conference games from earlier this year, we just can't make up because our schedule is just so tight already the way it is with make updates. Well, I think that that was indicated by the conference basically redrawing the schedule to uh, get in what they could. Yeah, I don't know how many times before that's happened, but... Uh, Drove up to Green Bay Preble on a Friday about th three weeks ago, and we totally redid the baseball schedule. Wow. You know, Chris uh, Wright was telling me that uh, he actually did the original schedule to try and arrange it so teams were playing the same team within a week so teams couldn't load up their best pitcher against you. Yeah, uh, not like, only like yeah. did or did last year with North. Yeah. You know, Craig would always hold them back to pitch against North. 
Yeah, that was part of it. The other, I mean, honestly, from the AD perspective, the bigger part of the new schedule, what they had set up originally was you, if you were going to play Green Bay Preble on Tuesday at home, you would play at Preble on Thursday. Right. Quite honestly, the bigger reason they did that is because if that game did get rained out on Tuesday, you play a double you could play the doubleheader the right. next Thursday, you yeah. know, that Thursday up there. Uh-huh. So, that, I mean, it was really smart thinking by the – the ADs and the you coaches. You gonna say Chris was smart? Um, I don't think I said that. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, who? I, you know, I don't know who who all had the input into that. But uh-huh. if he was one of them involved. Yeah, it was a lot of foresight to think that through. Well, we got one out in the inning. Mitch Egan struck out. Nick uh, Gretzen is up, and Nick has a two ball, one strike count. Uh, Zietz throws pretty hard. Yeah, he does. This is uh, my first chance to see him throw this year. And, uh, he definitely looks like he's bringing it, especially in this weather. I mean, you know, right, right. When it's 49 degrees out and raining, it's hard to get your arm loose. I had a chance to uh, talk to the West coaches, and uh, Paul Hogg is the assistant coach. He graduated South back in uh, 1995. That sounds like a Sheboygan name, Sheboygan yeah. South name. I think he had a lot of brothers. I think actually I played he did. He baseball meant, against his brothers. Yeah, you mentioned he's got several brothers uh, yeah. living in the area. Mitch Greeton is up. Greeton uh, singled back in the uh, second inning. So what about with uh, track and uh, tennis and uh, girls softball? Have they been, uh, they've been able to muddle through pretty good? Uh, everybody's been affected. I mean, girls softball lost. I think their first eight games were canceled. Oh, wow. And, yeah, so it's, I mean, everyone's been affected. We have had to ch- cancel a track meet uh, at home and, um, you know, every sport, tennis. Can you stick around for another half inning sure. or so? Okay, well, that's the end of the top of the fourth. We're through three and a half and uh, south on top, five to one. I went to uh, Arizona for the last couple weeks of spring training, got back on the 30th of March. My first game to umpire was supposed to be April 2nd, yeah. and I don't think I got my first game umpiring in until, like, the end of the month Yeah. And just because of the weather situation. Right. Yeah, it was a nightmare. I'm hoping, I, you know, I'm told this is a one-in-a-20-year deal. Right, so right. Well, you had mentioned, you know, how often has this ever happened in the uh, not that I have a great memory, but I've been umping for 31 years now, and uh, I can't remember it ever being like this. Yeah, I'm told by the real experience ADs in the area that some of them with good memories yet are telling me 1993 is the closest they can they can even remember really? to yeah. being like this. And this year they think was even worse. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to next spring. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wait when you get those indoor sports like in the winter time. Hopefully yeah. you won't get so much snow you won't have to cancel any of those. Yeah. I'm ready to play everything indoors now. We're gonna see if we can play baseball. And you know, I was just <laughs> thinking too, you know, you're saying about missing games and yeah. you know, obviously practices are affected. It's a good thing you got the field houses to yeah. help uh, with the practice situation. Yeah, our facilities were a, a blessing this year because you're right, for the first three weeks of the season all of our spring sports were indoors. I mean, the you know first three weeks, and without those new facilities, we wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah. And all those teams just wouldn't have been They'd practicing. They've been practicing until nine, ten at night, or they would have been later or than missed. that even, right? Yeah. Tyler Zietz leading off the uh, bottom of the fourth. It's five to one South. Zietz drives one out to right field. That's going to drop for extra bases. Most exciting play in baseball: triple. Nope, oh. we're going to see a double. <laughs> Zietz. Uh, with a stand-up double to right field. And that's going to bring up John Raff. Raff is 0 for 2. Came into tonight's game hitting uh, 294. We can figure out what he's hitting right now because I've got my trusty phone. I thought you were calling Chris Wright to ask him what that would work out to. He doesn't know. <laughs> he knows nothing. 
Johnny's hitting 277 as we speak. <laughs> so when you played baseball, Chris, uh, yep. what position did you play? Uh, I was a pitcher, uh, played shortstop, and then first base. Now, after was your dad the coach at that point? No, he was just helping out, but... Uh, it's kind of funny bring that up. I remember pitching a game in Sheboygan against Sheboygan North because at that time they South and North played summer, so we played against them every okay. year. But I remember pitching our first game, my first game of the year, which was probably about early May, um, in weather similar to this on this very diamond against Sheboygan North. Oh, sweet. I think I threw about 150 pitches that day, and I don't <laughs> know if my arm ever came back. <laughs> but How'd you do? We won. Actually, All right. we we did. We were fortunate enough to beat North that day, and I think they may have won the state title that year, actually. I think... Uh, or the year before. Yeah, I, I don't remember the year exactly, right. uh, but David Moyer, I remember, was the head coach, and they really they did have a very good team. They they yeah. did win state uh, one of those couple summers when he was coaching. Right. That ball by Raff hit off the uh, either off the pitcher's foot or off the mound, but it ricocheted right to Kellner at second base, who threw out uh, John. And that brings up Carter Amundsen. Carter is uh, 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored, and uh, he's hitting over 500. Yeah, he's he's a great player. Uh, obviously, he's been on the varsity since his freshman year. Just a hardworking kid. I mean, it's not a surprise to me at all that, that he has the kind of success that he has. He mm. just has talent and work ethic, and <laughs> that's a great combination. Oh, I know. You can't just do it on talent. you got to have that uh, work ethic and uh, desire to want to be good absolutely and he has it so it's a uh, success that's been earned that's for sure Azuka's pitch is uh, a little bit outside for ball two we're having a little trouble at times Chris uh, telling if uh, Todd Stuffergren the home plate umpire is uh, if it's a ball or a strike because he raises his arm right in front of his body and sometimes it's tough to see that now, I haven't had any mistakes with that, but Mike has uh, goofed up the scoreboard several times. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's a rookie over there, so we're, we're uh, going to be patient with him. You're not getting fired. <laughs> Matter of fact, you might have this job for life. <laughs> now, one of the things I know being athletic director is, is a tough job uh, from the standpoint of... Uh, Having to be around, like, no better way to put it, but, you know, you have to be around, like you're here tonight watching the game. Uh, how does that factor in for other sports and throughout the course of the year? Do you have to be around a lot? No, you know, I mean, technically you don't have to be around at all. I just I want to be around, you know, and um, I want to be around watching watching our teams and watching our kids and, and that I mean, there's nothing in my contract that says I need to be at you know at all the different at events. This, yeah, at all the different events. So, um, you know, obviously I want to be there to make sure things are running smoothly. And is and there stuff, anything outside the scope of athletics that you do? Yeah, I'm I'm associate principal also. So I mean, you know, I certainly have duties um, during the school day, supervising teachers and evaluating teachers and those things. So it's not yeah, it goes beyond just. Uh, just games. Okay. Didn't know that. Amundsen's fly ball to uh, center field is deep enough to allow uh, the base runner Zietz, or pardon me, Joey Schultz to score. Schultz came in as a courtesy runner and uh, give uh, Amundsen a sacrifice flying an RBI. So the average doesn't go down. And another run scores. It's 6 to 1 now for South. And uh, Robert Huffman up. Huffman is uh, one for two with the run scored. Yeah, I'll be leaving here and heading over to the soccer game right after this. But, uh, no, I just enjoy, obviously, sports and enjoy being around the, the kids and watching our kids and and kind of seeing how things are going. But You know, uh, it's hard to imagine an athletic director who didn't like kids and yeah. want to be at uh, different events and stuff. I can see where some things maybe you're not as interested in, but, right. you know, you still want to support the uh, teams. Absolutely. Yeah, you certainly would hope there <laughs> are no ADs out there that, that don't like kids or sports. How's uh, Jason Lederman doing in his new position? I think he's liking it. You know, I, uh, you know, to, to be honest, I'm not sure. You know, this when I see him, he usually smiles at me because 
he knows what the spring has been, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So in that respect, he's probably not missing the job too no, much. No, I don't think he. I don't think he's missing it this spring too much, to be honest. Well, at the end of uh, four complete innings of play, it's uh, South six and West one. They fought for social change. They fought against tyrants. They fought for human rights. Yet behind these achievements are individuals who waged a more personal war. They fought the struggle against mental illness. And they won. In an instant, everything we know can be taken away. I'm John LaRoquette, and as an actor, I've made a career on TV and performing on the Broadway stage. But is that what matters most? If I was suddenly disabled and couldn't take steps, couldn't I still act? Only abilities matter. Visit Kessler Foundation on Facebook and tell us your abilities. And go to KesslerFoundation.org, where only abilities matter. Uh, Chris Hine joining me up in the booth. Uh, we're entering the top of the fifth innings. There you see Salt on top, 6-1. to one. We were talking a little bit. Uh, Chris is going to run over and watch the uh, girls' soccer team play tonight. And I was just asking if, uh, the because they played JV and then varsity, and uh, they play 40-minute running clock, and uh, it's a long time to be outside in this kind of weather anyway. Yeah, the girls have, you know, they've had to gut it out through some tough, tough weather. I was telling Marty about uh, last Friday when <laughs> 6 30 right when they, the varsity game kicks off I mean it's just a downpour it was coming down in sheets and it was about 43 wow. degrees out so but those girls just I mean I was impressed by their effort and how they just gutted it out and weren't distracted by the weather really so, that is amazing yeah well Colin is uh two strikes on uh, John Day the west catcher uh, Zietz dealing on the mound for the Red Wings John Raft does a nice job behind the plate. He's a, he's a good catcher. Yeah, he is, and that's a, you know another kid who's worked extremely hard at his craft and has put in a lot of time. Really been impressed by him so this year. And I think I know Carter was a catcher earlier in his career. John John Day goes down on strikes, but uh, he was a pretty good catcher too. I think technically, defensively, and John was able to unseat him. And you know I know North has a couple of uh, real nice catchers. And uh, when they get to that uh, Legion season this summer, they're going to have a heck of a lot of good baseball players. Absolutely, yeah. Loaded at the catching position. Absolutely, and we have a, I think we have a very good JV, defensive JV catcher and a very good freshman catcher. Oh, yeah. So, wow. I mean, we're kind of Loaded. blessed. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of programs out there that are looking for one catcher, and and uh, I think Coach Clays is blessed to have, at least, you know, three, and if you count Carter, you're right, four Really just uh, going through their program and uh, noticing, I think, uh, what did we say? He's got 12th. This is 12th year as a head coach. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, uh, he's been around a long time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, how long has Coach Wright been at North? I think he's he got over 20, like 23 or 24, something like that. He might be one of the longest tenure. I think he came on board after David. Okay. David Moyer stopped. Okay. So, yeah. He's, uh, I think he's the longest tenured. Well, Deso is longer. Obviously. Well, I, I was going to say, in the but after Deso, for baseball. Yeah, I mean, for, for baseball, is. sure. And going down on strikes was uh, Aaron Mitchell. Yeah, let's see here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven strikeouts for uh, Zietz. Krasanski is up the right fielder. Zietz uh, really having his way on the mound. Given up a couple of hits, one in the first and one in the second, but uh, since that time he's uh, shut down the uh, Wildcats. There's a program that's uh, running on tough times with, uh, you know, a lot of the sports over there at West. And uh, I was talking to the coach, and, uh, you know, it's funny how that works because they were the creme de la creme back when I was in high school that well, program and it's like everything has changed the city of Green Bay right I think uh, obviously Green Bay's added a number of high schools probably since then you know I think originally it was just East and West right and now you have with 
you know, with Green Bay Preble and, and Green Bay Southwest and <clears throat> Schwabenon, which is right there. Yeah, and, Notre Dame, you know, the right, pier. Right, there's just so many, so many schools within that area, west of here, that, uh, and school choice, I think, you know, a lot of, some kids are choicing out of Green Bay West, and, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's the root of the, a lot of their issues. I think that was a strike, Mike. If it wasn't a strike, it should have been. <laughs> yeah, of course, Green Bay West is uh, and East are looking to get out of the conference. I mean, then, yeah, I saw that. Is there going to be any movement on that? They're probably not next year already, I would think. No, there won't be any next year, but uh, you know, looking at the 2014-2015 school year, that there's a you know, strong possibility that East and West won't be in the conference. We'll know more this this summer. Is there the possibility? I suppose there is the possibility, but what's the likelihood? Might be a better way to put it of uh, Sheboygan schools moving to a conference south of here. Well, at this time, I don't. There hasn't really been any any talk, talk of it. It's more um, or less reshuffling the or shuffling the teams. Yeah. For whatever reason, the WIAA has chosen basically to focus on the northern part of the state. And okay. Really hasn't, doesn't seem to me that they've really looked to the Milwaukee area too much mm -hmm. right now and haven't looked south. So all the focus that I'm aware of right now has been kind of away from south of us and more towards the north and northwest and regions like that. If they took uh, west, uh, ball four to uh, Austin Willowkett. And that puts uh, runners on first and second with two outs. Uh, leadoff hitter Jake Kellner is up. Kellner is 0 for 2 in the game. Uh, what would it look like, uh, you know, a conference outline if uh, they took East and West out of the conference? Well, we'd go to a 10-team conference, which is, you know, if there's a lot of proposals out there right now. Um, you know, the one thing that seems to be, uh, most likely is East and West leaving and then us having a 10-team conference, ten team. you know, when, in which, you know, scheduling would be pretty easy then. We'd right. be playing everybody in the conference twice. Yeah, and instead of having And most sports, except football, of course, you'd play everybody once, and that's your nine-game schedule. I think that the vision business is it doesn't work out right if you can't have a championship game at the end. I agree. You know, I agree, and I, I don't like the fact, ooh. Close play at first, but uh, just getting back is uh, Willa Kett. And uh, that would have been the second pickoff of the game for uh, Zietz. He picked off uh, Azuka, Zach Azuka, the pitcher for West, uh, back in the first inning. It's a really nice move by Zietz over there. I yeah. thought he had him, but the umpire yeah. had a better view than me. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> As an umpire, he said. <laughs> oh, Ooh, yeah, that, that time, time he did get him. Got him. <laughs> All right. And Zietz with his second pickoff of the ball game, and at the end of... Uh, Five and a half innings, of, four and a half innings of play. It's uh, make it five and a half innings of play. It's six to one south. Wow, that was a quick move. You're good. You're looking at the number one cause of lung cancer. That's why the Surgeon General issued this warning. Now you're looking at the number one cause of lung cancer for non-smokers. That's why the Surgeon General issued this warning. Radon is an invisible radioactive gas that seeps inside your home from underground. Whether you smoke or not, radon can cause lung cancer. Protect your family. Have your home tested. Call 1-800-SOS-RADON. Radon problems can be fixed. Grandpa, look what I got. Let me see. Oh, Dad, wait till you see the bike we got for Jake. Hearing loss happens gradually with age, making it easy to ignore. Yet most older Americans aren't getting their hearing tested. Untreated hearing loss can keep your loved ones from enjoying what they cherish most. Dad, can you hear me? Don't let that happen. Speak up about hearing loss. You'll be glad you did. You know, I mean, if you're supposed to be... We're talking about evaluation, and Chris had mentioned earlier that uh, he you know, has other responsibilities in terms of... Uh, outside the AG, AD realm, which is evaluating teachers. And uh, uh, my question to Chris was, do you have to evaluate coaches? Yeah, and um, after every season, we have an end of the season, uh, end of the season meeting, uh, the, the coach and myself, and, and just reflect on the season. 
you know, the good, the bad. And does his, when you reflect with the head coach, does he also bring in the any of the assistants and, and no, JV coaches? I mean, really, that's his role. He should, or she, should be having that same kind of conversation with, with his the, or her okay. assistants. All right. All right. So, I mean, they really should be uh, working with their assistants closely and, and talking to them about, uh, you know, areas that they're really strong or areas that they may need to work on. I was just looking at the cement down there behind home plate, and you can see the rain is coming down pretty good now. Yeah, it is. It's. Um, We're gonna see. You're gonna see the toughness of those girls again tonight. I know. Playing in the rain. I know, and with these low temperatures too. It's, yeah, right. I mean, it's it's a challenge. Tanner Recolitis is gonna lead off the uh, bottom of the fifth. Uh, Tanner is uh, walked twice and scored twice. He also has a stolen base, so he's had a pretty nice night. He'd like to get an at-bat where he can swing the bat and get a base hit, but uh, we'll have to see what happens. Zach Lazuka still on the mound for uh, the Wildcats. Connor Harrison on deck is uh, going to be a pinch hitter for uh, Jared Recolitis, looks like. Your dad's been involved with uh, baseball out in Plymouth for a long, long time. Yeah, he, um, he obviously he likes it. Well, he, he's a he's a baseball fanatic. I mean, he absolutely loves it, and was the head baseball coach at Plymouth for I want to say about thirteen years, maybe fourteen years, somewhere around okay. there. Okay. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to take a team down the state, and and uh, really, yeah, he's he's a Huge baseball fan. I got to tell you a story. When I was coaching baseball out in Chilton, we uh, we had a couple of rough seasons my last two years, but the second last year we hadn't won a game until the second last game of the season, and uh, so we were like one and eighteen, and we lost our last game and went into the tournaments. And for they did it different then. We had a bye in the regional, so we only had to play one regional game. We won. Oh wow! <laughs> so now we're in sectionals. Right. We won our first sectional game, and uh, in the other sectional game, it was Plymouth who had just hammered us during the year. Yeah. And uh, Cedar Grove, and Cedar Grove won. Oh wow! So now my thinking is we've at least we've got a chance. Right. I mean, if we'd had to play you guys again, there just there would have been no way. Tanner Recolitis, uh, by the way, flew out, and uh, coming up to bat is uh, number one, Connor Harrison. Connor making his first uh, appearance in the ball game. Connor steps in, hitting 238 on the season. But anyway, we, we played Cedar Grove and uh, wound up losing to him. Uh, disappointing. I mean, it was great for Cedar Grove. They went on to state, but could you imagine that? A team, one, one win on the well, season, you know, making it down to state? Baseball is is like that. You know, baseball is such a game of Everything momentum. that was going wrong all year, and we weren't right. a real good team, don't get me wrong, but right. things started to break our way. Sure. You know, and if you get a hot pitcher, too, mm -hmm. I mean, that can carry you a long way. Also, I, re I, I remember in the 90s, and I don't remember the year particularly, but I want to say Kewaskum baseball went to state, and they only won four games that year. Really? And they ended up getting on a roll in the And that was back in the day when they played those uh, high school uh, tournament games in uh, West Bend. Yep. Re yeah. I think yeah. Regner Park, I think it's called. Yeah. So they, they got on a roll at the end of the year and, and in the tournament and were able to go – you know, make it to West Bend. I think you're right. Plymouth had some really good team. Well, I told you about that one year, and I think well, you know, Rick Meyer and uh, Butch oh, yeah. Kane Absolutely. and those guys. They, they won a state championship. Right. I think it was right. 1982. And that was one of the years I believe I was coaching uh, out in Chilton. You know, we had to play those guys. And uh, Scott yep. Richards, I believe, was the coach. Yep, he was. You're right. And Digger Miller was a great player. Went on to Oshkosh and right. was part of their World Series championship teams at the Division Three levels. A Played great uh, player. many years with the Green Bay Blue Ribbons. Was a right. great player for them. Butch Kane, who's a coach now at Plymouth, was a catcher. And, right. Uh, Rick Meyer. Yep. Matt Miller stepping in now. Miller is a f sophomore. Chris, he, uh, according to Mike, he just moved up to the varsity. He's one for two in the ball game. A good addition. He's was hitting 500. Well, he still is hitting 500. He's five for 10, but not now. 
I think Marty, you put the jinx on him. Uh, it's, that's <laughs> what we do. <laughs> no, but he's a very good athlete, Miller. Yeah, oh, yeah, we, for uh, sure. We think he's got a very bright future at, at South. Plays basketball and baseball. Okay, I didn't know him as a base basketball player, but he would have been on the JV. No, he was on varsity, actually, This toward the end of the year. He, okay. He got moved right. up to varsity right. for the basketball team. Before we let, well, let's stick around because we got to talk about Mike Rank. We didn't even sure. talk about basketball, but... Uh, there you can see South on top, 6-1. to one. We're going to be entering the sixth inning. Stop. Whether it's on the way to school, at school, or online. Bullying has become a non-stop threat to our youth today. Is your child being bullied? The National Runaway Switchboard can help. If you're having a hard time, get online or call to chat now. perfect to be a perfect parent because kids in foster care don't need perfection they need you I thought you were keeping score Just well, flew out the right <laughs> <laughs> all righty leading off the uh, bottom of the sixth is going to be Aaron Gutierrez uh, let's talk a little bit about the new hire Mike Rank new basketball coach at South uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Mike and leading off well, Mike's um, you know, been a teacher in, in the building at South for, I think, about 12 years. Um, coached football for all 12 of those years. Uh, coached basketball at one time when He graduated when South in, like, 93? Graduated from South in 1993. He was an all-conference basketball player at South. Uh, you know, so he he's bleeds, you know, red wing red. Yeah. You know, so, um yeah, he's very familiar with with our kids, with the history of the program, you know. And uh, which, obviously, which he likes good. basketball, which is oh, a he's, prerequisite. He's passionate. I mean, basketball is his, his love. I and mean, he he coached football for me for us for twelve years, and uh, we always knew he his <laughs> his passion was really basketball. And um, you know, and obviously, he was a head coach at Random Lake, ba head basketball coach at Random Lake previously. That was not also. a good fit. No, well, I think his passion exceeded what uh, their, you know, yeah, interest was. I guess. Yeah, Random Lakes, uh, you know, right? They've gone through a number of of head basketball coaches there, and uh, yeah, it wasn't a real good fit for him. Jake Kellner is uh, leading off the uh, sixth inning for uh, West, and uh, nice, nice, nice play by John Raff there. Yeah, got a new pitcher in the ball game, AJ Gutierrez, freshman. Now chucking. Let's see if we have anything on AJ from the stats that uh, Craig provided for us. A nice play by Amundsen, who's over at uh, third base now, moving over from short. Uh, looked like he wanted to leave it roll foul, and then uh, still was able to get the guy at first. Absolutely, yeah. It looked like he was he was waiting for it to roll foul, but had the wherewithal to uh, notice it wasn't going to, and the arm strength to still yeah. throw the guy out at first. A.J. is 1-0 uh, and oh on the season for the varsity. He's pitched uh, two and a third innings, has an ERA of uh, 3.00, so uh, looks like he's uh could be a good one. Yeah, I think, uh, I know he, he pitched earlier this year against Manitowoc in a game here and did a really nice job. You know, for a freshman, he's got a lot of ability, I think, and a lot of potential. So how does the basketball team look for next year? Uh, I know they were pretty young and uh, getting a little older, which uh, you like to have those seniors on your team. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're, you know, we're excited about the possibilities uh, for next year's basketball team. And you're right. Are the lower-level coaches sticking, sticking around? Uh, that's going to be up to them and, and, and Mike, you know, to see if it's a good fit or not. That'll be, that'll be their decision. That's not something that I would dictate, you know, mm -hmm. who's going to be coaching for who. 
Uh, so that we'll see how how that all how that all plays out. But that's Mike right now is in the process of trying to put together a staff. But yeah, we're all we're all really excited. I mean, Tim built a good foundation, you know, this year for the future. I mean, they played a lot of young kids and. And then those kids were playing really good basketball at the end of the year. I give uh, Tim a lot of credit because he played a lot of different guys, uh, you know, and he gave them a chance. And uh, I thought he was well organized, and uh, he knew his basketball. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully the kids are have gained some confidence at the end of the year. I mean, they like I said, they played very good basketball, winning basketball really the last it you seemed know, like early in the just couldn't catch a break. <laughs> right, and they were young and, you know, and, and had a lot of inexperience. But, you know, it gave, gave North a heck of a game in that regional, yeah. regional game. Right. And, you know, had played probably their best basketball of the season the first half of that game and just couldn't quite hang on. You know, he knew North was going to come back and with pride in the Ooh. second half at home. And right, they're going to make a run at you. It's just a matter of... Well, Azuka drew the walk. And next up is uh, Mitch Egan. Uh, Egan's having a tough night. He's uh, 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts, but uh, that was against Zietz. And uh, Tyler was uh, pretty good tonight. Only gave up a couple of hits and had seven strikeouts. Yeah, I was impressed with Tyler. He threw the ball, threw the ball hard and, and around the plate. And did a really nice job in these conditions. Here's something. Now, Tyler's still in the game. He's at shortstop. And it seemed like when I was coaching, we always had several outfielders that were pitchers. And, uh, you know, and then they were good hitters. And so when they would be taken out from the pitching, you know, it'd stick them out in the outfield and hope they didn't have to make a strong throw, <laughs> you yeah. know, into the infield on uh, some kind of a play. And I think you run into the same kind of situation with Zietz. You know, being at shortstop yeah. after having thrown. Yeah, I don't know what his pitch count's at. I, I know his arms is warm, though, so we don't have to worry about him warming up his arm to make the throw yeah, to second really. or first. Uh, but I, I don't think his pitch count got too out of control tonight, so I think he should be should be okay. Nice when you only have to go five innings. Right. Kerry Coutzer, uh manning that camera. Richard Bartson is... Uh, Whoa, man on first, lost track of the outs, and uh, Amundsen made the catch and then threw it over to Recolitis for the easy double play. And at the end of five and a half innings of play, South on top, six to one. Oops. This could be a bicycle. Or a bat. This could be a robot. Or an airplane. This could be a playground. This could be a book bag. Or a soccer ball. This could be a book. This could be beautiful. This cannot be trash. This can all be recycled. Learn more at thiscouldbe.org. That's Richard's camera, and you can see it's uh, getting a little foggy. It's really not that bad here at the park. I'm just wondering if he's got some moisture inside his camera. That would not be good. In pitching for uh, the Wildcats now is uh, Ethan Bartles. Bartles is a sophomore uh, taking over for uh, Hazuka, who did a nice job when he was out there. Chris Hine joining me up in the booth while we're talking, uh, imagine that, talking sports. <laughs> yeah, probably not talking as much baseball as we should be, but I <laughs> hey, hope the right. viewers aren't getting uh, too that, annoyed by us. That's our uh, third camera, Chris. It's uh, down there by the screen. It's uh, being manned by the Invisible Man. And uh, Kerry Kautzer is uh, up a little higher, manning the third camera. That shot right there in the... In the truck is uh, Scott Mailoff. He's uh, 
spinning the dials and switching the switches, getting us from camera to camera, hopefully uh, keeping everybody so they can hear us. <laughs> he's only turning it down when I talk. I'm not sure if that's what they want, but <laughs> I'm sure he's got. doing a good job. Of it. Yeah. Mitchell Martinez is going to lead off the uh, bottom of the sixth. Uh, Mitchell is uh, one for two with a couple of RBIs. Got that big hit back in the third inning. They had the bases loaded, and uh, he doubled in a pair of runs after uh, South had scored on a fielder's choice by Recolitis. Hit a little topper right in front of the plate, and uh, the runner on third beat the throw home. Trying, Paluka was Pazuka was trying to get the force out at home, but the uh, throw was a little late. And then Martinez followed with a uh, two RBI single. Count is one and one. We're in the bottom of the six. South on top, six to one. Now, Chris, you mentioned you played baseball. Uh, we know you were, a, and I didn't realize this. I think we talked about this during the winter time. You were a really good basketball player, maybe even better than a football player in high school. Anyway, I don't, I don't know for sure. But uh, anyway, the question is, what was your favorite sport? Uh, whatever season it was, really. You know, that's why. I, played three sports in high school and and during football football is my favorite sport and during basketball I couldn't wait for basketball to start and and get into that and then during baseball you know I love playing baseball so you know some of these people that play one sport I I don't know if I would have been able to do it I think I would have got bored or burnt out if I just would have focused on one sport so there are some real benefits from being involved, and, you know, you hear that all the time, but uh, let's talk a little bit about that. You know, people or students that are involved in sports, what's the benefit? Well, I'm just sports I'm not in just general talking or about multi-sports? Well, multi-sports. I mean, to me, I'm, I think, you know, I look back, and, and as you mentioned, I mean, honestly, probably growing up, I was on varsity my sophomore year in baseball and basketball. Um, some people, I think, now look at that and say, well, I better, those are my two best sports. I should specialize in those two. Well, it ends up, I pl ended up playing division one college football, you know? Right. So yeah, you never know. to me, I mean, you just have to, I think it makes a lot of sense to keep your options open. I also think the different, different sports uh, require different skills. And, you know, I think by playing multiple sports, you're, you're a more well-rounded, better overall athlete which is going to help you in whatever academic sport you choose. Academic advantages? Academically, it keeps your time structured. I mean, I think that's huge. You, you know, a lot of times uh, people think, well, since you have practice every day, you're going to do a, a poor job academically. And I actually think the worst thing for kids or students, whether they're in high school or college, is free time. Oh. I mean, if you have, you <laughs> Tell know, me about it. if you have too much free time, you're, you know, you're going to, you're going to waste a lot of time. And I think the structure of athletics actually helps kids academically. It helps them structure their day. It helps them organize their day. Learn you how to plan. Yeah, they know, you know, I have practice after school, and then I have to do my homework. Whereas those kids that don't have any practice, they're saying, well, I can do my homework later. I don't have to do it now. Well, then later comes, and they don't want to do right. it then either. Exactly. I, I can, you know, so I, I think, it, you know, there's unbelievable benefits. You know, I could go on for probably an hour about this. Um, Please don't. They're just all <laughs> over. Yeah, they're all over. It's just... You know, sports are so beneficial in so many ways. I just wanted to mention uh, Mitchell Martinez grounded out the first play, first base and uh, the first baseman, Mitch Greeton, making a nice play over there. Good hustle by that young man. And uh, now hitting for uh, the Red Wings is uh, not Gutierrez, but A.J. Gutierrez. Is that a brother? Probably. That, that is him. That's the same guy. Aaron? That's, that's A.J. Okay. All that's right. A.J. I got the wrong number written down for him. I got him as number two, but he's really number 12. Yes, he is. Well, I've been functioning the whole game with that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Only a veteran like yourself could, could pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens when Wright's not here to help you? Uh, <laughs> just, he's just helped kidding. me out. No, I'm serious. <laughs> he's helped me out plenty over the years. Another easy roller. Gutierrez is out on a three unassisted. And that takes us to the top of the order. 
Uh, Tyler Zietz. Zietz is a one for two with a double. He's uh, scored a run. He also has a stolen base and uh, went uh, five strong innings on the mound. Uh, we mentioned he had seven strikeouts in his uh, five innings. And one of the things that uh, you weren't here, but you know, I was looking at his stat line for pitching, and uh, he gave up 19 hits in only 14 innings, which is really pretty much. Uh, this outing, you know, only two hits in five innings, so that uh, was uh, much better for him. And now he's got his second hit of the night. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I really didn't get a chance to see him pitch because he hasn't pitched at home this year much. Okay. Uh, most of his starts have been on the road. And, uh, I was really impressed with him today, and it's hard for those kids. You know, they, a lot of their, their pitching has been in tough weather. So, um, you know, it's good to see him kind of get into a groove today, and hopefully he can carry that through the rest of the season. Ethan Bartle's on the mound for uh, the Wildcats. Uh, Raff takes that first pitch high for a ball. Zietz on first. There's two outs. Line drive to right. Right fielder uh, comes in, makes a nice play. That was Prozonski. And uh, we're at the end of six. We're getting to the end of the game, Chris. Yep, hopefully we can close the deal here this, this half inning. You are the man. All right, after uh, six and a half innings of play, six to one, south. I hope we're not bringing in Axford. It's not over. Japan still needs our help. This is not yesterday's news. It's happening now. This is Japan, now. Let's help. Some risks are obviously not worth taking. Watch where you're going! Some aren't as obvious, but could be just as deadly. Like the risk for type 2 diabetes, especially if you're over 45 or overweight. Take the diabetes risk test. It's free and takes less than a minute. Type 2 diabetes is one risk you can't afford to take. So stop diabetes before it stops you. <laughs> Back at uh, Wildwood Park, we're getting ready to start the uh, seventh inning. Uh, south on top. Uh, West is hung in there pretty good. Uh, I know uh, they're, they came into tonight's game 0-8, and, eight and uh, they didn't... Coach was telling me they don't have enough pitching, so they didn't uh, schedule too many non-conference games. Yeah, and, uh, I give them credit because they're hanging in there, competing. Yeah, they are. They are. They're playing. They're playing well. I think. Um, you know, any t any any player with a bat in his hand and any pitcher with, a, with a ball in his in his hand is dangerous. You know, you I just you. you just never know. It's like you said before with your Chilton team that made a run and the Kewaskum team in the in the 90s at won four, three or four games during the year and ended up going to state. Anything can happen. Nick Gretzen is going to lead off the uh, top of the seventh. He's 0 for 2. Grounded to second his last time up. A.J. Aaron Gutierrez is on the mound for uh, South, entering his second inning of work. Deep short. Zietz with the long throw. Oh. And uh, Gretzen is safe. I thought he had him, but the uh, umpire called him safe. And I couldn't see that because actually I'm right in line with the, the base and the pole. I got blocked by the <coughs> pole also. So, okay. I... so we'll give that one to uh, base umpire Dan Schmitz. Yep. And uh, Mitch Greeton, he uh, made a couple of nice plays in the field and also has a hit to his credit. He's one for two. South has not hit the ball real much, though, uh, Chris. In, in that game at uh, West, Southwest that they won the other night, 3-2, to two, they only had five hits, and uh, they're sitting with uh, six tonight. You'd, you know, they've got some really hot hitters, but uh, I'd like to see them maybe hit a little bit more. Yeah, I think, um, you know, high school 
baseball more than anything, I think, comes down to defense and pitching. I mean, at every level it does. But you're right, the hits are the things that uh, – they had uh, snap throw by Raft, but hits are something that's going to be there some days and not be there other days. But you got to, you know, defense should be there every day, and hopefully your pitching is going to be there every day. Um, you know, guys, I don't care if they're Major League Baseball players or if they're high school players, they're going to hit slumps. They're going to go into slumps. So usually you don't go into fielding slumps, like you said, or yeah. uh, or uh, if you're a fast runner, you don't go into a running slump. Right. But I'm sure, you know, they'd all like to improve their batting averages and stuff like that. But it's it's good that they're, uh, you know, even though their bats haven't peaked, that they're still have a winning record and are, right. you know, having a nice yep. season. That uh, ball was fall in the uh, bullpen area down the uh, first base line. Todd Stuffergren behind home plate. We mentioned Dan Schmitz out on the bases, our umpires tonight. Doing a good job. We got a little, or, but a bit of an early start, uh, knowing the weather was going to be uh, rough, and uh, we've had the steady rain. Not enough to have to call the game. The field is uh, stood up, which is a good thing, and we're going to get this ball game in. Yeah, I've really been impressed with the field. It looks like it. You know, the city's done a nice job, and and it's held up pretty good. Hot shot to second, second for the first out and back to first for the second out and that's a double play and now we're down to the last out of the ball game. Good play by Huffman over to Zietz. You know, really nice turn for those kids and a good stretch uh, by Tanner at first. Nick Borsted had a high throw early in the game was a two base throwing error and uh, made the comment if you get it over Recolitis <laughs> head you know it was a high throw. <laughs> yeah absolutely he's uh you know, what you want at first base, a nice tall first baseman. Uh, John Day, the uh, Wildcat catcher, is up. Uh, Day's had a tough uh, tough game at the bat. Uh, he's 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. But again, that was uh, facing uh, Tyler Zietz. That pitch is outside. It's 1-1. One and one. Yeah, we definitely don't want to give any free passes here, so hopefully A.J. can... Now, when you go over to that soccer game tonight, are you going to stand outside the whole time, or are you going to sit and watch in your car? I will definitely be standing <laughs> outside. I'm not going to say that I won't be under the canopy of the concession stand, but but uh, I'll definitely be outside. No, I, I will not be in my car. You heard it here first, people. <laughs> You might find me under the concession stand canopy, though. <laughs> I will say that. Do they draw pretty good crowds for the soccer games? Yeah, they do. I think if we got some nice weather, it would help. I mean, we. Yeah, have, really, I we, hear you. <laughs> we unfortunately haven't had good weather for one of our home soccer games yet. Ground ball to third. Amundsen's throw over to Recolitis is in time, and that uh, is our ball game. Sheboygan score. South wins it by a score of uh, six to Green six to Bay one. West. South had uh, six runs, six hits, and no errors. Uh, West had one run, four hits, and I believe they had two errors. South had an error, too. But uh, anyway, South the winner. That uh, improves their record to a 10-3 and three on the year, 6-2 and two in conference. And uh, I want to thank uh, Chris Hine for stopping over and joining me on the broadcast. This is a great job, Chris, and uh, all the best with you and uh, the AD job. Yeah, thanks, and go Red Wings. All right. Uh, for the crew, Richard Bartson and Kerry Kautzer on the uh, cameras, Scott Mayloff, our director, and your announcer, Mike Martin and Chris Hine. Thanks for watching, everybody. We plan on doing a couple other baseball games, so uh, you know, keep looking on TV8 and uh, we'll bring you some more high school baseball. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you down the road.